Well, all those people looking for a great healthcare providers look no further than ZocDoc because they make it super possible to get into the doctors that you want that are patient reviewed and take your insurance within 48 hours. ZocDoc is a free app where you can find amazing doctors and book appointments online. We're talking about booking appointments with thousands of top rated patient reviewed doctors and specialists. You can filter specifically for the ones who take your insurance, are located near you, and treat almost any condition you're searching for. I adore my dentist. She is so close to me. Her, I was able to book an appointment for like that week and I could see all the patient reviews that were glowing about her and she absolutely lived up to the wonderful reviews. Just go to ZocDoc.com slash V-I-A-L-L or download the ZocDoc app for free today. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash V-I-A-L-L. ZocDoc.com slash V-I-A-L-L. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Vile Files Ask Nick edition. I'm your host, Nick, joined by the household of Amanda and Genevieve today. The apartment. The apartment. Well, Derek and (laughs) and Allie are in the other room, like working hard. Working hard. Working working very hard. Being wonderful. We're literally running this uh, operation. Captains. they're not with us. Yeah. The mom and dad of the household. Just their punk ass kids. <laughs> yeah. Well, you two are the punk ass. Obviously. Kids. Yeah. <laughs> what are you? You're like God. The... <laughs> oh, and he's humble. <laughs> That's huh. not the first time you said it, and yet it was just as surprising, just as shocking, <laughs> <laughs> just as hard for me to process <laughs> as the first time you said it. Well, as I was telling Derek and Allie when we were having like a leadership meeting, I'm like, you guys are like the mom and the dad of the company, and you know, whatever. They're like, what's that make you? And I just thought of it. But wow, God, God, what do we have coming up this week? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got a question for you. Yeah, I was at a wedding this weekend. What do you think of two heterosexual people greeting each other? How do I want to phrase this? What do you think <laughs> yeah. of a man approaching a lady in a relationship with the kissy, cheeky, whatever hmm. thing? Are they European? I have never seen it been done. Never seen it been done. Nope. Okay. I feel like it's such a cultural thing. Like, I, cause in Italy, it's like, it's like you're rude if you don't do that. What do you think of an American man? Well, but that's, but like, but if I say it's cultural, so there could be like trickle down. Like some people I think okay. are just like, what do you like think of an American man who, to my understanding, has no deep European roots, doesn't have family in Spain they visited every summer, has no reason other than one day they saw it on a movie, I'm assuming. Did they do this to the other people that they greeted? I have no idea. I assume so. I don't think it's like a... That's a really important piece of this. Because what if he wants to kiss this girl? Here's what happened. Okay. Pray tell. A friend of ours, and I, I quite like this person. Our friends, actually, we have another, we have a group of couple friends. And my guy buddy doesn't like this other guy. Mm. Because this person, everyone in social settings... Uh, sometimes just acts inappropriately, you know, in like what way? our couple friends are very much in a very committed relationship and he will talk to her as if like our friend's not there. It's just like, it's like, dude, what are you doing? And the person, the person in question, how can I say this? It just isn't a threat. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's not like this person who doesn't like, I'm, I'm speaking too fucking cryptically. Well, yeah, I- I'm a little confused. So there's a couple and then a single man or is yeah. he in a relationship as well? No, there's a couple and a single man. And the single man is the doesn't one who... Doesn't like the boyfriend. The boyfriend, the boyfriend doesn't, doesn't like, like the, the single, single man. man. Oh, and there which one isn't the threat? The single man? Yeah. The single man is not a threat. And he's the one who gave kisses on the cheek. Yeah, he went to greet Natalie with like a kiss on the cheek. But Natalie wasn't looking. <gasps> oh, no. And so when she realized so-and-so was greeting her, she turned to greet. And they, you know, like got pretty damn close to like a peck on the lips to which the immediate replies, oh my God, oh my God, oh, oh, I'm so, oh, I'm so sorry. The single man got super awkward around me and like left. And like, I didn't really think anything of it. I was kind of annoyed. I wanted at the time after like the dust had settled and if I would have saw him the next day, I might've like put my arm around him 
in a very kind of aggressive way and said, maybe next time just don't put your lips anywhere near my fiance and something like that won't happen. After the dust settled, I was like, you're not fucking European. There's no reason for you to be like reading women in general, certainly women in relationships with a like across the cheek. Like that's not who you are. Why are you doing it? You know, or am I over seeing the situation? I think am I being a little uh, like territorial territorial? Well, I think it's a key thing that you're like, this is not who he is. Like, I think the fact that because I we but all not have, who he is, he's not European. No. And I, and I know what you mean, because I do feel like there's certain people who it's like they're just like they're loose. <laughs> they maybe are like more passionate, but wh- or whatever you just like they, they, their greetings are on brand for who they are. You know, well, this person's a very friendly person. OK, super friendly. I mean, by not who they are is they're not fucking European. It was like one day they decided they watched a movie and were like, I'm just going to greet people like this. It was just a choice that they decided to do. Not mm. be, it wasn't their culture. Well, I mean, how did Natalie feel about it? What do you mean? It was just more like weird and awkward and none of us really cared per se. But it was just more like, you, why, are you, like why are you trying to greet Natalie by kissing her on the cheek? Well, that's why I think it's like the- You don't know her that well. Like, yeah, we're all friends-ish. But like, it's not part of your culture. It's not how you greet, I guess, everyone. Because the people you're talking about, they do that with men and women. It's not a gender thing. Men will greet men and do the kiss on the cheek thing, like with certain Europeans, right? You don't get to like pick and choose who you do that with. And I'm assuming he's only doing that with single women, but he's not doing it with other heterosexual males. He's never done it with me. That, he's never said hello to me by kissing me on the cheek. So why is he doing that? Well, the reason I ask how Natalie feels about it, because I feel like that's when you kind of know if it's like a territorial thing or if it's... Uh, like, hey, this was like this she was didn't want to have an awkward peck on the lips moment with him in public. Right. But do you think she would have been totally like unfazed if it had just ended up being like the cheek kiss thing? Oh, I wouldn't. We wouldn't even be having this conversation. It mm-hmm. wasn't like he kissed her on the cheek and I was like, well, how dare you? What are you doing? It was the result of the whole situation where he went up to her to greet her without even like. Without even her knowing that he was there to greet her. He snuck up on her. He literally snuck up <laughs> he on her. Not that he was trying to sneak up on her, but in the moment like of like kind of feeling his presence from the side, she turned and then at the same time, like simultaneously kissed each other on, on the lips. Baby peck, harmless, no big deal. But it was the whole like, wait, what just happened? You kissed my fiance on the lips. Well, how did that happen? It's just like your lips were like an inch away from her face. And I'm thinking just maybe don't fucking ever do that. Like your lips don't need to be near her face ever. I wonder if he's like, I'm at a wedding. All my friends are getting like married and having children. I'm an adult now. Maybe for the first time ever, I'll try this on for size. And it went so horribly yeah, it's wrong. It's definitely not what happened. <laughs> okay. Hmm. I mean, he obviously didn't intend to do this. And you just said if he had just kissed her on the cheek, you probably wouldn't be feeling this way or bringing this up. I wouldn't even have noticed. I wouldn't have thought twice about it. But it's more a combination of A, hearing my other friend's frustrations about the same guy. Yeah. That like, you know, I'm in a relationship with her, right? You know, and not that he's never doing anything where you're, you're not threatened by him. You don't, you're not worried about your partner, you know, at all. And like, it's just a general lack of disrespect that like that person's in a relationship with the other person. And like, I don't know, like when I was a single man, and if a woman was in a relationship with another guy, I would treat her differently, right? I would yeah, just right. be more mindful. Be of more, stuff. I just be more mindful of like not doing that shit like that. And it is. That's what I'm, and that's why I bring it up because it is subtle. It's like a subtle. And I'm, I'm, because I'm thinking the more I thought about it, I was just like, maybe just don't fucking put your lips near other women who you don't aren't sure they want to kiss you. I think you were to- obviously so justified to like have a reaction to that and be just kind of like, whoa, why is he doing this? I think in terms of like saying that, is he the kind of guy who would like talk shit about you behind your back and be like, like, and like really twist the story and be like, yo, like Nick was so weird about this. And like, so weird like about- don't you ever put your lips near my girlfriend? And like, like, do you know what I mean? Like, would he be dramatic and amplify it? Because I think that would be more. This is not really worth. about like, should I call this guy up and talk? Call. I mean, the, 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 it's over. Sure, sure. I've, really it's not an active situation it's this is not an active situation 
but it's just more, would I have been wrong had I took a step further and been like, hey man, like maybe just don't ever fucking put your lips close to her face and stuff like this won't happen. Because I'm thinking there just there shouldn't have been a situation where you put yourself in a situation to accidentally kiss my fiance. And I feel like there are certain boundaries of people in a relationship where like, I just, that wouldn't have happened with me. I, w- I, I wouldn't walk up to some woman and kiss her on the cheek to greet her. Cause I'm not fucking European. I don't do that. You know, if someone does it to me, I respond in kind or whatever. And kind of like, Oh, I guess someone's kissing me on the cheek. Great. But that's not who I am. And I don't think this person does this with everyone they see. I think they only do it with certain heterosexual women. Hmm. Who presumably they would be interested in pursuing if they weren't in a relationship kind well, of thing. Again, in this scenario of the two women we're referring to, like he would just be super lucky. Right, right. To, you know, if, I'm not saying this person has a crush on Natalie or this other person. I'm just, I'm assuming based off of who they are and who Natalie and this other person are, he, he would have been flattered by their interest if there was. Totally. Yeah. I want to hear what people have to say in the comments because I feel like I don't I'm not like, oh, that's fully out of line. But I also don't know if it's fully necessary to say something But like, you know, I don't have a strong enough opinion on this where I'm like, I feel the need to like police your the way you want to handle it kind of thing. But I'm curious about the people and my friend in the relationship. His general take has always been like, I just don't like his general behavior around my partner knowing that we're in a committed relationship. And it's nothing, anything like egregious or obvious. It's always like this, like lack of boundaries and respect for people in a relationship. It is definitely not because I think this guy's up to something or anything like that. It's just a lack of self-awareness and boundaries and respect. I think that's so valid. What do you think overall? Well, I feel like that extra tidbit is like coloring the situation in a different way like i'm curious what people think with like an unknown man that we're talking about like it's no one specific is it weird in general for like a guy who is you know straight not in a relationship to kiss a woman on the cheek you know the fact that he is already like you guys already feel this way about him like that's oh i did great. It, but it was he my other friend it was Do you always now I have now experienced what my other friend has multiple examples of. Yeah. And it, like, again, it's weird because it's like the situation itself was a nothing situation. I didn't fucking care. I'm not one of those guys who's like, oh my God, like, and like whatever. It was obviously an accident. It's just that some guys will act differently about women, women than they do men. Sure. And then there are guys who will act differently around available women and single women. And he seems to act the same around women in general, regardless if they're in a relationship or not. Hmm. Has he been in many relationships? I don't think so. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Sus. Definitely sus. Yeah. Well, I don't think it's sus. It's just a lack of like I just mean like sus in the sense that it's like there's something yeah. off about it. Like not like, oh, he's scheming, but just it's like. It's definitely not him scheming. Like there's just something like that's just like, like, why do you not read the room in this way? Like, yeah, why do you not like, know this? These people aren't available to you for you to go and kiss on the cheek. Yeah. Has there ever been a way that either like, well, I presume, I presume your boyfriend's very well behaved. Has there ever been a way that somebody else has greeted him or like shown a kind of like physical affection that's like made you feel a little off or weird? Um, not really. Like, ha- has that happened to you? No, there was like one time where I was meeting up with him at a bar where he was playing pool and I walked in and he was having like a one on one conversation with a girl. We had other friends there, but like this girl was like standing at the table he was sitting next and they were like engrossed in conversation. And it wasn't like it wasn't something where I was like, oh, this is unacceptable or this is not cool. But I was the, like, I think I kind of had that instinctual like uh, like <laughs> kind of reaction. But then my boyfriend, he mentioned it later and he was like, oh, my God, like right when you walked in, like it's this girl who I like. See, like, that's her boyfriend right over there. Like, so it was like, I think there's times where, like, the alarm bells can, or, like, not even the alarm bells can sound, but where you're, like, the dogs are, like, sniffing in the air, being like, do we have to, like, go on the chase? And then they're like, no, we don't. We simply don't. It's all good. I feel like that's the question we're asking is, like, do guys have to treat women differently if they're in a relationship or if they're in a relationship? But that, what's that to do with ability to be friends or not? Well, because I think it's about, like, boundaries and implied. Like, if you have to put up all these boundaries like is that really a friendship well 
all relationships have boundaries, regardless of what the relationship is. I think in heterosexual relationships, friendships or romantic wise, there's always a layer of sexual tension and possibility. And so while I think men and women who are straight can have platonic relationships, I think they're hard to trust and they're temporary. And even if they're platonic, they still play, they still sometimes play the role of the boyfriend or the girlfriend. And I think it's really easy to like that and without necessary, without being fully aware of liking that. Like, I think there's like I look back on like friends that I've like guy friends that I've had when I was single where I'm just like, oh, there are definitely some ways where I like liked someone filling this role that I was like not fully aware of at the time. We're kind of like, oh, it's kind of like partner. Yeah, like, I mean, it's just more like you, you can have a, a friend of the opposite sex that you don't want to fuck, that you are genuinely, when people ask, oh, we're just friends, that you still like the company of the man or the woman, you know, just to have that kind of male energy or that female energy to have around when you're single, which is different than like going to dinner with your bros or your girls, you know? And that plays a role, which is why many of those genuine platonic relationships still like fade away over time when you actually find a romantic relationship going off of this question do you think you can be friends with someone who you like think is hot not necessarily have like a a deep pull or attraction to that you explore or anything like that where you're just like objectively you're a very hot person i don't want not hot people in my life though (laughs) you know what i mean you think i'm associating (laughs) like what do you think nick about like again i think it's more like i think you can they can be hot but I, I think when it comes to platonic friendships, you have to make an active choice to be friends. You have to have certain boundaries. Like, I don't have to have certain boundaries with my guy friends because I'm not attracted to men. And I don't have to tell myself, hey, Nick, this, like, just to, for the sake of this friendship, like, like, make sure you're acting a certain way. But I've never had a platonic friendship with a woman that didn't naturally require certain boundaries. Yeah, it's like if I spent the night sleeping in the same bed with my straight guy friend, there's no like making sure I have to act a certain way, you know, or have a conversation the next morning. But if for some reason I have to do that with a a woman friend, I'm just going to be mindful of my behavior. You know, I'm going to be mindful of how I act because she is a woman, you know, and I'm a man. And there's always that possibility. And I think if you don't have that self-awareness, that's a problem. I also think it does wonders for your partner, like a mutual friend or like my boyfriend's really good friend who I've gotten to know and adore. One time she was like in passing, she was just like, oh, yeah, like your boyfriend's really good about he's like never borderline flirty with people like nowhere near that. Like he never behaves in a way where they could possibly misinterpret that. And like hearing that, I was like, oh. Yeah. What a magical little relief. Like, not yeah. that I was worried he was, but like, he's a really outgoing, like, friendly guy. And just like hearing her say, like, he is notably different from a lot of other men I know, just in the sense that he is like super mindful That's of that. That's an act of fucking choice. And when yeah. I'm in a relationship, I go out of my way to make it obvious I'm not available at the risk of certain people thinking I'm rude or off putting. I would rather have another woman think I'm an asshole or rude than have her think I'm flirting with her. When I'm in a relationship and I don't want my actions to be misconstrued as anything other than loyalty to my partner. And that is a choice people in relationships can make. A thousand percent. And I, and I, that's my kind of my logic to this other guy. It's just like, you know, platonic or not, like I think men and women who are heterosexual, yeah, there's a certain level of self-awareness and respect, even if you don't want to fuck them and things like that, of you just like, you should, you know, they're not your gay friends or your, you know, your friends that where there's no possibility of, something happening you know and then there's a level of respect that you you know you should act a certain way when you're in a relationship and you should act a certain way towards people in a relationship totally yeah it's like the difference between like if i'm in a relationship and a like because it's i feel like with all like all my queer friends who are like female or not like you know it's like very it's it's easy totally different scenario easy piece no issues But like, I think with like specifically like straight male friends, like I'm not going to tuck in their label on their shirt. I'm going to be like, hey, your label's out. Right. You know, like it's just little things like that where you just like uphold boundaries. It's a perfect example, you know. It's like, it's not like, oh, if you tuck in your label, you want to fuck someone. But it is just a level of like kind of consideration. But yes, we've 
we have calls of people calling in asking about like, well, I'm friends with this person and we will read signals like fucking crazy and try to break them down with our friends. And that's always on the table in heterosexual relationships that have evolved into, I wonder if I have feelings for this person, you know? Totally. So respecting the possibility of that ever happening, even if you don't think it's ever a possibility, they might. And you need to be mindful about how your actions are received, you know? Right. And you got to be so self-aware because I think it's really easy to secretly like get off on the possibility of what if, like when you're single, like I was like, there was when I was single in Australia, I had this really close friend who had a huge crush on. He was like this like dreamy Australian surfer guy who was like five years older than me. And we would go and he had a long distance girlfriend. So like nothing ever happened. But like we would go shopping together and I would like, you know, pass jeans over, you know, just like stuff like that, where I'm like, there's certain like there is something going on there that was like not fully platonic and I think it like kind of provides this like safe validation space where you're like well I'm never going to know because I'm never actually going to do anything that would like cross a line or be like that overt but you can kind of like in your head like covet it a little bit in a way that's like a little little icky or a little not ideal. And I've talked about this before in previous episodes but I had two platonic friendships with women that started after we initially hooked up. And then we lost touch and reconnected. This happened at two different as- two times of times in my life. And then when the friendships really took off, it was very platonic. We had boundaries, we respected, we but that's the thing. We didn't ever spend the night. We would go out, we'd have fun, we'd talk about each other's dating lives and things like that. But like I would never like spend the night or anything. You know what I'm saying? Because like we did hook up once. They were very attractive women. So clearly I was had the possibility I was already attracted to them. I had once asked them out. We had hooked up. But then when we hung out just as friends, totally completely as friends, there was never weird moments, whatever. But like, yeah, when we went to dinner or had movies, we were still filling that role of like female or male companionship, you know? And like, just if nothing else, going out together and having people know, wondering if we were dating made us feel yes, good about ourselves. That's the best you know? way to say just it. To know that like, people might think we're dating and you know what? They might think we look cute together. And honestly, I just want to know that people think, I could be in a relationship because I've been single for so goddamn long type of thing. Just all these little thoughts that go through our heads, you know, it might be totally platonic, but it's not the same as your bros or your girls or with your gay friends. It's just, it's different. And pretending it's the same is you lying to yourself. Totally. BetterHelp, this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Well, we all know that we advocate for therapy on this show. And if you have ever thought about getting a therapist, look no further than BetterHelp. So much about starting therapy is just that kind of hurdle of finding the right therapist or finding the time and things like that. Well, BetterHelp is here to make things more convenient. They are working with top rated therapists, thousands of them. So finding one that matches with your needs and your personality is super easy with BetterHelp because they work with so many therapists. Also, it's online therapy. It's not face-to-face, which is more affordable than face-to-face therapy. You can do it from the convenience of your car, your home, your tablet, your phone. As long as you have a device, you can be talking to a healthcare professional. You can be talking to one with just in uh, 48 hours. Just go to BetterHelp.com. You take a quick assessment and they will uh, get you with a he- mental health professional right away. Let BetterHelp get you started on your therapy journey because taking care of, of your mental health is just as important as taking care of your physical health, like working out or eating right and things like that. So make the investment in your mental health because it's just as important as all the other investments you're making for yourself as well. Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash V-I-A-L-L today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Make your brain your friend with BetterHelp. The most beautiful bathing suit I own is from Quince. It's the Italian ruffle. It's this like stunning one piece. It's The fabric quality is amazing. I also have a really nice uh, blouse from there that's like an active wearish material. So even though it looks like elevated and nice, it is like completely like sweat proof. I wear it when I go for a hot, like a walk on a hot day and I want to have something like covering my shoulders. The th- awesome thing about Quince is in every single category of goods you can be shopping for, they have some high quality stuff that is so much less than you will find it at all of the other stores. Yeah, it's 50 to 80 percent less than similar brands. And I feel like, you know, we're entering fall And I'm sure people are thinking, oh my gosh, I need an entire new wardrobe. Well, that is expensive. So you should shop at Quince. They partner directly with top factories so they can cut out the cost of the middleman and pass the savings on to us. And they only partner with factories that use safe, ethical and responsible manufacturing practices 
along with premium fabrics and finishes, which is just good peace of mind to have. I know, especially as you were saying, fall is coming up. The Mongolian cashmere crew neck sweater is only $59. They have suede bomber jackets, like truly some of the most high quality items that will be a fixture of your wardrobe at a price that is so much better than the competitors. Check out all the styles at Quince today. Go to quince.com slash V-I-A-L-L for free shipping and 365 day returns on your order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash V-I-A-L-L to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Period slay. Period slay. <laughs> uh, well, we got some great calls for you. Excited to get to them. Don't forget to send in those questions at asknickatthevilefiles.com. Pop off in the comments. We'd love for you to, especially on YouTube, let us know what you think. Weigh in. Yeah. It's interesting. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Because like my instinct is always to like not make a big deal about it. I'm not one of those like overly macho guys who feels like I need to, I didn't need to prove anything. You're not the whistleblower on The Bachelor. <laughs> like... I what, This wasn't a threat to my relationship. You know, Nyla and I didn't give a shit, but it was more like that felt inappropriate and it felt most importantly avoidable mm, there it is. and it was like how could we avoid this it's like well maybe don't put your fucking lips <laughs> near all these women's mouths you've only said fucking lips <laughs> you never once because it's just annoying get your fucking lips out my girlfriend's <laughs> cheek <laughs> it's just like what the fuck dude you know and you and i know it's just him not having that a little amount of respect for the relationship that these people are in yeah. And if he just said, hey, you know, I'm just, uh, that person's in a relationship. Totally. He's, he's not taking that into consideration. Certainly. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get to our call. What's your time with Nick? Let's ask Nick your sexy questions. How's it going? Good. What's your name? How are you? Good. What's your name? My name is Stephanie and I'm 33. How can we help Stephanie? So my ex-boyfriend reaches out every time his wife is pregnant, and I would love it to stop. Okay. How long have you been broken up with this ex? Um, literally like 10 years probably now. And when, I mean, other than the, what, what do you mean by he reaches out every time his wife gets pregnant? He is now going to be on his third child, okay. and the last three times, like we went years without talking and the last three times that he's reached out to me literally two days later it's announced on facebook that they're having a baby what, what the last three times so what was the and he's on he, yes so the first time was their first child that probably like she's probably five by now is he having or, a fourth child now? No, she just means like this is the third time and it's happened okay and yeah. the first times did you answer the call it's just through text it's not a call did you respond but I did to the text yeah okay. like what is he saying also he just says like how are you um how's your life like we talk about you know how life is going whatever and then um he will step into like sexual stuff he'll ask for pictures he will talk about our previous like our sex life when we were dating I mean, he goes really far down that rabbit hole. Do you have these messages? No, I, I deleted. I delete. I blocked him and deleted the messages. Okay. But how much, if at all, have you responded to this? I responded to it, but I didn't partake. Like, if that makes sense, I kind of tried not, to shut not, it down, like, with really. one word answers. So okay. he, he um, reaches out, right? He's like, hey, how's it going? Out of nowhere. Hey, what's yeah. up? How's life? And then as soon as he starts sexting you, like, what are you responding with? It's not so much sexting. It's just like, remember whatever that you know, time. Yeah. I guess, what are you responding with is my question. I'm like responding when he's like, remember that time when this happened? I'll say, yeah, I remember. What? And I'll say, why? Like, why are you talking about this? And he'll just be like, oh, I'm just reminiscing. And then he'll say something else along the same lines. I want to keep the friend. Well, not anymore, really, I guess. But we have had a good friendship. We were friends before we dated. And that was a decade ago. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. A, so we're not. It was a decade. Ago. We're not friends yeah. with this guy. And you okay. said you blocked him. I blocked him on my on my phone. Yeah. And how is he now reaching out? Well, after you, the you this previous just conversation, him. I blocked him. Yeah. What was that conversation? Um, the same thing he, I mean, he was 
begging me to send inappropriate pictures. He got mad at me because I didn't. What do you mean he got mad at you? He was like, why would you not? Why would you not send me a picture? This is ridiculous. Like he was mad at me because I didn't send him a picture. And then you blocked him. At the end, I said, I'm I'm discontinuing this conversation. Okay. This is ridiculous. And I ended the conversation and then I blocked him. Okay. So is the problem solved? I mean, I, I guess it is solved if I blocked him. But what from your point of view, why would he keep reaching out to his ex during these times whenever his wife is pregnant before they announce? I, I don't know. If I'm being honest, there, there's something about your story that doesn't seem to be adding up. OK, I, I, I don't know, you know, but, you know, you started the conversation. Be like, my ex always reaches out when he he's preg- announces a pregnancy. You know, mm-hmm. Inappropriate. So, you know, you blocked him. Great. You know, I was a little confused as to why you were responding at all. I was a little confused Mm -hmm. by your statement of wanting to maintain this friendship after finding out this friendship only existed more than a decade ago prior to you guys entering into a romantic relationship. And then you entered in a romantic relationship. Who broke up with who? Like it ended? What what happened? He broke up with me via text message. Okay. So like the more I'm talking it out, the more I'm like, why was I trying to maintain this? But I just... I wanted to maintain the friendship. If for what purpose? Because we have fun together. I mean, when did we, you have when did you have fun together? Before we broke up. When you were in a relationship, you had fun. Mm-hmm. And then he ended mm-hmm. it. Right. Yeah. So, he's reaching out and there is something about him reaching out despite you knowing that it's wrong and inappropriate and good for you for not indulging in it, but there is something about him reaching out that deep down you like. And you want more of on some level because you're, you're yeah. overcomplicating a very simple problem, which mm-hmm. as far as I'm, was for, for what I'm hearing, you've already solved the problem. You don't even really need right. our help. You know, your, your problem was, Hey, I need to stop this. And now, right. you know, you've, you've blocked him again. Maybe he might find a new way to reach out to you. And if you haven't blocked him on mm-hmm. social media, you can go ahead and do that as well. Mm-hmm. And I'm assuming now that, you know, when he texts you, he'll realize he's blocked or or you won't respond and he'll get the point but up into this point my guess is it sounds like you've done just enough to entice him to keep reaching out right and maybe that just enough is you simply responding because it makes no sense that you respond at all Mm -hmm. your ex-boyfriend reached out years later and you knew he was not only in a relationship but was married Mm -hmm. And you're responding. And despite his inappropriateness, you know, that has nothing to do with your choice to respond. And, you know, I'm not trying to give you, you know, he's the one who's in the wrong. But at the same time, mm. you're, you're not entirely the victim here. The right. real victim is his right. wife. Mm. And you are doing just enough. And it sounds to me like maybe you've been lying to yourself just a tad. And doing the thing that people do and saying, well, I just want to be friends. And then Mm -hmm. that allows you to give yourself permission to respond to someone you have no business responding to. Right. And you've given yourself a green light by pretending and, you know, adding a little delusion into the uh, equation by, you know, saying, well, you know, I just want to be friends for someone you were friends with a decade ago. And it's like, oh, well, we had fun. We had fun together. It's like like a different side of it. It's all making sense. And I feel really stupid <laughs> well i mean you know don't feel stupid like it's it's human you know and and i think the fact that you called in is probably an indication that you knew there was like a little something more to the situation but like now that you know it's like, yeah you want to hold yourself to a higher standard because especially yeah. now that you know like you'll only feel worse if you yeah. right. kind of behave the same way and anytime someone breaks up with us and and we're sad about that and our egos are bruised. You know, them reaching back out whenever is a small little consolation prize of, well, maybe they still care about me. Maybe they still think about me. And that feels, makes mm-hmm. us feel good. And if they yeah. hit us up in periods of loneliness, I don't know, what's your dating life like right now? I'm not dating anyone. Okay. So like there might have been times where you felt a little lonely or missing that connection, you know? 
you mm-hmm. associate connection with him because at one point you two were connected right. and when he reaches out it, again it feels a little good but you at least have yeah. the moral compass knowing that like you you shouldn't be reaching out to him but you're you're still playing along with him a little bit you're playing that game and then like the biggest indicator that nothing isn't making sense is that your last question. You're like, well, you know, I blocked him, but why I'm really calling is because I want to know why is he reaching out? Like, who gives a shit? I don't care why, and I certainly yeah. can't tell you why, and I don't know him, but the point is, he shouldn't be. The why right. doesn't matter, you know? Because you're kind of deep down hoping that I'm going to say, well, maybe he, you know, maybe he likes you, or maybe he misses you, or maybe he's unhappy in his current relationship. <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, and... I don't, I don't really care if, of, about the why because he's married and he's right. having kids with someone else and he broke up with you and he's not, it's not as if he called you up and said, hey, you know, can we talk? And I just left my wife and, you know, this is weird, but, you know, I've been thinking about you and, you know, then if that were the case, you could consider it. But he's reaching out to you and having expectations of you as if you two mm-hmm. are still in a relationship. And as wrong as you know that is, there is something about it that makes you feel good. And yeah. even though you get to say no to him, the ask makes you feel good. That's it. And you entertaining him is because you still like that he asks. And you've told yourself that you saying no is protecting your character. But it's not. Well, I mean, you're not doing the, you know, I don't think you need to be that hard on yourself, you know, you know. <laughs> But I, I think you've been slightly dishonest with yourself. These aren't strong character choices, but it's not the end of the world. You are, at the end of the day, doing the right thing by not entertaining him. I'm nitpicking. This is more about you just being able to be honest with yourself. This is not about me like trying to yeah. make you feel bad for your decisions. Okay. So why aren't you dating right now? Um, I'm just kind of working on myself. Okay. Um, what does that mean? Um, hold on. My dad has passed away um so i'm just kind of getting myself together i moved away from my hometown about a year ago and haven't really explored the dating life down here so i'm just kind of building myself up i guess working on my self-confidence working out working just kind of taking time for myself that's great what's your friend's situation down here um i don't really have any (laughs) okay that's what i would focus on right now keep focusing on yourself you know the working out whatever if that makes you feel good great is what i'm doing taking care of me i think those are questions you should ask yourself and then prioritize friendships get yourself out there join groups you know improv some whatever class there there are classes out there are social events look into that there are dating apps that have friend features I actually, as as bad as dating apps are, I think they're pretty good in terms of making friends. Or if there's something that like, if there's like a cause or area that, you know, your dad really cared about, like maybe there's a volunteer opportunity Mm -hmm. in that lane. That's a great idea. I never thought of that. Because I think right now, again, your weakness in in responding to him, I think is purely out of loneliness and boredom, you know, and understandable and like missing that connection. You've then you've had this tragic loss of your father another connection that you're used to and you find comfort in that you will no longer have. And that obviously sucks. And, you know, it's going to take time to process that. But in the meantime, make some friends and that'll take some time and be vulnerable and put yourself out there. You want to ha- you want to make some friends. It's hard to date in general. It's, har- it's even harder to date where you put all your eggs in one basket and, and that basket being hoping that You know, you can meet someone that you not only like, but like can be your friend and kind of keep you company and just like, that's a lot for anyone to handle, but you know, invest in yourself, you know, keep working on yourself, do things that make you feel good about yourself, go out and make some friends. And even if it's just one or two friends, just having a couple girlfriends, Mm -hmm. you know, or a gay bestie, you know, whatever it is. Yeah, I'd love that. Try to stay away (laughs) from the platonic male friendships for now, because those can be pretty confusing. Yeah. Give yourself a little bit of grace. It might take some time. How old are you again? 33. Okay. You're still, you're still young. Am I? <laughs> well, yes. I don't, feel, yes. I don't feel young. Well, you're never, you're never, you know, I think you stop feeling young when you turn 25. Very you know, true. Even before that, That's, you know, but yeah. it's one of those things, you know, you have to wait till you turn 25 to rent a car. 
and turning you 25 can't. is the last time you'll the world or society is telling you you're too young for anything right this is kind of what i mean yeah but you are super young Thank i mean you. everyone should just assume <laughs> they're going to live till they're 85 or 90 mm-hmm. i don't know if you are and if you don't that sucks but like <laughs> whatever but <laughs> let's assume that you are and in those schemes like you have so many years left right yeah so take the time for me right now yeah so don't waste time worrying about what you haven't done think about how much you have left to do mm. and when you turn okay. 70 like you can start worrying about <laughs> how much time you may or may not have but right. in, until 70 you're kind of just wasting your own time by worrying about how old you are yeah i think also people are creatures of habit and so it takes like something tremendously painful like for me like it is like something i need to be forced to change in certain areas like yeah we all have areas where it's like oh easy peasy improvement but like we're creatures Mm -hmm. of habit and so it takes something like that is like an a goddamn emotional earthquake in my life for stuff to get shaken up and i'm so sorry you're going through this and i would never 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 wish this on you knowing that it is happening and that you are finding your way through it and knowing that like the tiny silver lining is that this is a real opportunity in all of this like tumultuousness and feeling unsettled and feeling lonely that like Mm -hmm. you have no choice but to change because you know you want to get yourself to a better place and like using that as an opportunity and as a motivation and also just like I think you're gonna be so proud of the way you build yourself back up. Thank you. I'm it's definitely it's definitely gonna be hard work but I'm here for it. I'm yeah. here for it. So, do you follow each other on social media? Yeah, we do. Block um, him. but I'm going to block him on there yep. too. Block him. <laughs> do not ever respond to him. The why doesn't matter. It's just such a douchebag move. That's yeah. his problem. That's his problem. It sucks. It really it sucks that he reached out. It's so shitty. Yeah, it is. And the fact that he's done it twice before, you know, I just like I didn't under I don't understand why guys do that. Like why yeah, but he again, me I, the night before his freaking wedding too. I know Amanda's going to be the empathetic queen that she is, and I. But <laughs> I'm going to be the tough love person here. That's his problem. You know, you're going through a lot right now, and you are a victim of having to deal with the tragic loss of a parent. You are not a victim mm-hmm. of him anymore, though. You right, know? and you're right. mad he reached out three times because you responded three times. Yeah. And true. <laughs> and why? I don't know. And it's not like why guys do this. You know, I don't know why people people do shit when they're bored and unhappy. And I don't know. You're not his therapist or a psychologist and you're certainly not his friend. It's just not your problem. Your problem okay. is you find it entertaining and it keeps you preoccupied and it's <laughs> something to worry about. And it's dramatic and it's drama. And we like drama more than we like to admit because it's not boring. Mm-hmm. Right. You need to practice. Controlling your thoughts. And when you ask yourself, why did he do that? You need to say, stop it. It doesn't matter. It's none of my business. The point is, he's married. We're not friends. We're not in a relationship. It's inappropriate. I don't care why. Mm -hmm. And every time you ask yourself why about something or someone, you are investing energy in that why. So when you ask why about a guy, you're investing energy in that guy. And if you're in asking why about a guy that who is married or in a relationship, then you are investing energy in a guy who's married. Right. Okay. That makes sense. And it's none of my business. Yeah. And you need all your energy to focus on like you healing and you getting settled and you building right. yourself up. Yeah. And I hear you on the, I'm, I'm sure it is a distraction from something you want to be distracted of, which is obviously the passing your father. But there's other things you can distract yourself with. Distract yourself with things that, like we said before, make you feel good about yourself, give you a sense mm-hmm. of pride or purpose. Distract yourself with the stresses of making friends and the drama behind that, you know? Right. Okay. Well, this helps. All right. I wish well, I could give you a hug. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Sorry for your loss, do. but I'm glad we able, were able to nip this in the bud, so to speak. Yeah, definitely. Give me something to think about for sure. No more whys about guys. No you, more whys about guys. Who you I have no it. future in, yeah. No more like whys about guys who lies. Who <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> lies, yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Well, thank you guys. All right. Take care. Yeah, and All email right. us. You- let us know like what thing you do like i like i would love for you to like challenge yourself i don't know whether it's like a week two weeks a month to like 
have an update for us where you're like, this is the thing I'm now involved with. Like, yeah. I showed up to this bar <laughs> trivia and asked a table if I could join their team. I st- found this volunteer organization. I found this pottery class. Like, any, any, anything. Like, something. Okay. Yeah, we want an update on your friendship finders. Okay. Or your, your, your pursuit of friendships. Okay. And to Amanda's point, we want you to get out there, be active, join some sort of social club. And by social club, I mean, you know, bar trivia, bowling, pottery, whatever the fuck it is, doesn't matter. Yeah. People who are also interested in getting out of their apartment and socializing and taking the risk of meeting strangers and hoping developing meaningful connections. It's never not going to be scary to meet strangers. So you might as well get it over with. So that way you get the benefit of like friends as soon as possible. Right. Okay. Challenge accepted. All right. We'll talk soon. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Thanks. All right. Bye bye. Yeah. Drizzly, the most convenient way to buy beer, wine, and spirits with delivery to your doorstep when you need it. I received a wonderful gift for my birthday from Drizzly, a nice little bottle of a whiskey. Super convenient and super easy for that person. It's the best last minute gift idea of all time. If you've realized that a loved one, a parent, a sibling, a friend, someone you forgot their birthday, it's the last day. They live across the country. Within an hour, you could be sending them a very wonderful bottle of their favorite wine or whiskey or tequila or whatever it is. And if it's not with through a gift, maybe it's for yourself. Maybe you don't want to go out in the rainy weather. It's getting cold outside. Who wants to go out when they forgot the wine? Or maybe it's just a party you want to keep going. Either way, Drizzly is making it super easy to restock those liquor cabinets and fridges with the drinks that you want and need. Drizzly is the go-to app for drink delivery. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com slash gifts. That's drizzly, D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com slash gifts. Choose a great gift. Use code V-I-A-L-L to receive $5 off or $0 delivery fee off your first order. Again, use code V-I-A-L-L to receive $5 off or a $0 delivery fee off your first order. That's drizzly.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Must be 21 plus, not valid in all states. Codes cannot be combined with any other offers, not valid at all retailers. Code expires October 31st, 2023, 11.59 p.m. Eastern. Helix Sleep, the greatest mattress created. Helix lineup offers 20 unique mattresses, including the award-winning Lux Collection, the newly released Helix Elite Collection, a mattress designed for big and tall sleepers, and even a mattress made just for kids. So whether you sleep on your side, you sleep hot, you sleep cold, you're a back sleeper, stomach sleeper, it doesn't matter. Helix has a mattress for you. They're all incredibly comfortable. If you need to know, I sleep on the Moonlight mattress. It's great. It's incredibly affordable. You can try it for 100 nights, and if you don't like it, you can after 100 nights, you can send it back. There is absolutely no reason not to get a Helix mattress. I don't care what you are looking at. You got to go Helix. All their mattresses come with a 10 to 15-year warranty, depending on the mattress, and right now, you can get two free pillows. Just go to helixsleep.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Use code HELIXPARTNER20. Again, that's HELIXPARTNER20 for 20% off all mattresses and two free pillows. Uh, that's incredible. Again, go to helixsleep.com slash V-I-A-L-L and use code HELIXPARTNER20 for 20% off and two free pillows now. This is their best offer yet and it won't last long, so get their best offer yet. Go to helixsleep.com slash V-I-A-L-L and use code HELIXPARTNER20. How's it going? It's going as good as it can be. What's your name? My name is Megan. How old are you? I'm 30. And how can we help? The man that I thought that I was going to marry uh, just asked for a break. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> when when did he ask for a break? We had a little bit of an argument on Friday, like right before I went into work over the timing of me booking an Airbnb for a trip home to a family wedding that we RSVP'd to like months ago. I went to work and I cried all day. And then when I left, I called him and was just like, hey, um, I... I'm sorry for the way that that went down earlier. Why did you apologize? Um, just because like I, I understood that like I should have booked the Airbnb earlier and I didn't. And I feel like he got stressed out from that. So I guess I apologize for causing him stress. Okay. I need to rewind. I need to rewind for a second here. To be clear, you got, how long have you guys been mm-hmm. dating? A year and a half. Okay. I've been dating for a year and a half. Okay. Plenty of time. You have some report. You guys live together? No, but we had just started talking about living together. So you don't live together, you've been dating for a year and a half. You guys got invited mm-hmm. to a wedding. Yeah, it's my little cousin's wedding. Okay. Wedding is when? Um, uh, Saturday. This Saturday. Uh-huh. 
Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And la- a week before the wedding, you booked an Airbnb. I was going to. I was waiting to like link up with him and be like, just to like, I don't know. Hey, does this one sound cool? Cool bucket. So I found one and I was like, is this one okay? And he was like, sure. And I was like, okay, it'll be this much for me and this much for you. And he was like, I thought you were paying for it. And I was like, oh. So the fight was over money, essentially. Yeah. Okay. That was the end of that conversation. But then when I called him later is like when like it really popped off. So he was like, well, you're just like, uh, like aggressive. And I was like, aggressive. Like, what do you mean? And he's like, like, like that was really stressful about like the Airbnb and whatever. And like your paycheck to paycheck living is like stressful for me. I was like, oh, okay. What does he mean by that? We had had the conversation about moving in together uh, about a month and a half ago. And like, we are kind of starting to like, think about the logistics of that. And he was like, you said you need a promise of engagement before we move in together. And I was like, I didn't say that. I said that I want to make sure that we're on the same page about our futures before we make the big step in moving in together. Like, it wasn't like I was coming at him like ring or nothing. Like, I don't think the conversation about moving in should ever be a negotiation. And yet it almost often is nowadays. I do strongly feel that moving in with each other shouldn't be a negotiation. It should be a mutual choice that requires people mutually to be both mutually excited and then once they're like, yeah, I would love a movie with you too. And oh, I would love to move with you. Then you sit down and kind of figure out the adult conversations that are required when two, two adults move in with each other and like, well, and that will shift the dynamic of the relationship. So I guess I'm, I'm trying to get to the root of what's going on with the okay. two of you, right? Because it sounds like you're confused about what the fuck is going on. Yeah. And so let me let me just reference this quick argument that we had in the first 30 days of us like dating we decided that we were dating and i was like cool if we're dating like i have things that i'm trying to do like i want to have kids and i want to get married that argument turned like that escalated and he or heated conversation i guess whatever and he was just like i don't know if i want those things mind you the both of us are divorced But he was like, I don't know if I want those things. And if you want an answer right now, it's no. But I was like, okay, I get that it's like super early, but like, I just kind of want to, I know exactly what I want. So I wanted to lay it on the table. And if you know 100% ever that you don't want any of those things, like, I just need you to be honest with me and tell me. Why are you having heated conversations about what you want out of a relationship? That, That shouldn't be contentious, you know? But like... Yeah. So I never brought it up again after that conversation. Like we just, I was like, I'm just going to chill. I realized that that was too soon. Shouldn't have said anything like that. The rest of the year and a half, like goes by up until this point. And he has made like little comments here and there. Like somebody was talking about marriage nearby and he's like, you would be blah, 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 blah. Like this would be your last name. And I was like, Oh, got a nice ring to it. And like logged it. And then he was like, I'm playing with the dog one day. And he's like, oh, like the dog's good with kids, like completely unprompted. And like, he'll say like super misleading things like that. And then when it came up to that conversation that we had on Friday night, he was like, and you just keep like saying that, like, you want to get married. And like, I don't want to do that. And like, I 100% don't want to have kids. And I was like, whoa, like, I asked you about this, like 30 days into our relationship, if you were on the same page as me. And he says, like, that he already told me that um, I should have known marriage doesn't mean anything. And uh, like having kids is not something that he's going to do. I just and then after that, he was just like, I just I just want a break. And I was like, a break. Like, but in the same breath, you're saying that we have fundamental differences that you're that we can't reconcile. Like, what? So the next day I needed to get my easy pass out of his car. So I hit him up and I was like. Hey, can I come grab that? So I did. So I ended up going there last night, actually, and just told him like where my head was at throughout the whole relationship and like how I took him saying like, I don't know if I want any of those things about like marriage and kids because like he had a really shitty marriage and like so did I like I get that I get how you can have a bad taste in your mouth about that. He had a relationship after he got divorced with this woman that had two kids And that ended tumultuously. And I can see how maybe like that, the kid thing also put a bad taste in his mouth. Like maybe that broke his heart, but like, 
I guess I kind of thought that like, as our relationship grew, like we might, we might be able to get there. How are you planning on getting there? Or did you, did you just think that like magic wherever you wanted to go? You literally just said, I thought we would get there. I assume with marriage and kids and things like that. And my question to you is, yeah, what was the plan? I'm being rhetor, uh, like, re like you didn't have a plan, <laughs> I guess is what I'm saying. And that's what a lot, it's just like, I thought we'd get there. And you just thought that would like magically happen because time. But well, I just thought because of like, as our relationship grew and like, there was just such an how initial are you, spark. And, how like, are you growing your relationship? I don't know. Dating, exactly. getting deeper into intimacy, into the relationship, into like. Well, that's what I'm saying. So you, you tell me if I'm hearing your relationship wrong, but well, here's what I've heard from you, right? Two people who got out of divorces had some baggage in their past relationship as we all often have as adults, right? Yeah. Sounds like they were both individually painful for you both. You come across both of you as a couple, as two people who, who haven't really worked through that. More importantly, you also come across as a couple that isn't really great with communicating with one another. Um, it sounds like you guys more often than not living your own thoughts and make a bunch of assumptions about what you hope the other person does or what you think the other person mm -hmm. is going to do or is thinking. And then every once in a while out of mostly likely frustration, you, for example, will just like blurt out like your expectations. Well, I want to get married. I want to make sure you want to get married. Almost like I have a sense of panic because you haven't really brought it up organically or you haven't sit down as a couple and just had a chat. Sounds like you were like, I want to have kids and I want to make sure you have kids and I need an answer. You know, you, I think you're have a, you're, you apply pressure to situations that need to have pressure taken off of them. And then when that conversation doesn't go as well as you hoped it does, you both just say, you know what, let's just table it. Ugh, I don't want to stress you out. This is, I wasn't trying to stress you out. I'm sorry. Let's just pretend it doesn't happen. And then for the next, I don't know, six mm -hmm. months, instead of having conversations about this, you're just like reading tea leaves. And you're reading these little like moments of where he mentions like about a dog liking kids or things like that because you're too afraid to have the conversation that went poorly the first time. So you don't want to like upset him and you're not sure how to bring it up. So you don't talk about it. And then you guys yeah. aren't really connecting. And when I ask questions like, how are you guys growing your relationship? You don't have an answer. I'm not trying to pick on you. It's very common, unfortunately. You know, most couples aren't like having some like, well, all right, what are our goals in this relationship? And that's fine. Maybe he doesn't want to have kids. You know, maybe he doesn't want to get married. There are successful relationships out there that don't want to get married and don't want to have kids, but they're still finding ways to connect and they're still communicating, you know, and they're still talking about what's the goal of the relationship. Well, I don't know. What do we want out of this? Why are we here? And may, fine. You don't want to have kids. You don't want to get married. Well, what do you want? Do you even know what his goals are for this relationship? What is the mutual goal between the two of you of how you guys are making each other feeling loved and connected? You know, you guys are just going through the motions. Like last night, I was like, so you don't want to get married or have kids or whatever. Like, do you see a future with me? And he was like, yeah, I do. I just see like just a future with you, though. Like, I don't see myself with anybody else but you. But I just I don't want to have kids. And I was like, oh, OK. And you don't ever want to get married. Like, you just want to be 60 and 70 years old. And I'm your girlfriend because like I don't want to do that and he was like what's wrong with that i was like do you have commitment issues like, yeah, what, you, like see, what is the see, problem like if you're gonna you, be with me you, anyway, hold on, hold on, time what, time why are you time so time like can you hear me poor? can you hear me yeah okay you're you're <laughs> i appreciate you're frustrated and you're venting but you're you're not mm -hmm. listening to me you're not hearing how you're sounding like i get you're yeah. frustrated with it and you have the right to be frustrated with what's going on in your relationship but like mm -hmm. you saying, do you have commitment issues is not going to get this guy to open up to you. It is not going to get <laughs> yeah. this guy to feel connected with you. You're going to make him feel judged. You made him feeling like he's doing something wrong. He has the right to not want to have kids. He has the right not to want to get married. Now, you deserve to be in a relationship with someone who ha has, you know, similar interests and goals. But it's not fair for you to mm -hmm. judge him for that. As soon as you get disappointed, it sounds like you get reactive and start saying things that might trigger him. And you open up this conversation by telling us that he feels stressed out by you, uh, that you, I don't, I don't know what else, you said something like- Aggressive. Aggressive, he called you aggressive. Mm -hmm. And if I'm being honest, you, I get what he's saying in the, in the minutes that we're talking, you know, just by how you say you're communicating with him. 
Like, but him, me being aggressive to him is like any kind of communication at all. But again, I'm only picking up what you're telling me, but the way you say yeah. you speak to him does sound aggressive. It sounds like you have little patience for not hearing what you want to hear. I could picture you going into any conversation that's sensitive or you're not sure how it's going to go. And I can picture you going in fairly nice, fairly mm -hmm. like non-confrontational. But as soon as his attitude changes or he says something that you don't like, it immediately triggers you. And then you get defensive and you go more on the attack mode. And even the attack mode is like this whole, like when you say like, what, do you have commitment issues? Like that's, that's an accusation. Mm -hmm. That's an attack. And you are not going to get the type of response that you're looking for when you start throwing out accusations like that to your partner. And again, you have the right to be frustrated and disappointed. This is not about you're wrong to feel the way you are, are feeling. It's just more about how the two of you communicate things, you know? Yeah. And the fact that you guys don't have a relationship that welcomes like constant checking in and communication about how each other's feeling about various topics, you guys have a habit of just bottling it up. You're like, you're not alone. Most couples, I think, do what you guys do. And then you ruminate over it inside and you build out your frustrations. And then you kind of, when you, when one person finally has the guts to confront the other, you're just fucking unleashing all your frustrations out in a single moment. I get your frustration. Like I can imagine what it's like to date for someone for a year and a half and have them like blurt out, well, I never want to have kids because you kind of feel like, well, I told you a month in that I do. But in reality, yeah, like I just feel like I was so clear. Sure. Like, but you were also and I understand that it was early. But like when we were talking about moving in together last night, because like he said, he just started to feel some kind of animosity like from me around then I agreed. I was like, yeah, because it got scary. Like it's scary to think about moving in with somebody when you don't even know if they see a future with you. And he was like, well, I can't even think about getting married if like anytime soon or proposing or anything, if we've never lived together. Well, you said earlier, well, I told him what I wanted. I thought I told him. And so in your mind, mm -hmm. your version of this story is a month and a half into us dating, I told him I wanted to have kids. Mm -hmm. That's not the truth of the story. The truth of the story is you told me you want to have kids and he told you, I'm pretty sure I don't. And so you both come in from that truth. His truth is, mm -hmm. I told you I didn't want to have kids. Your truth is, I told you I did want to have kids. And what you both chose to do is just ignore that and hope the other person would come around. And neither of you did. And now you're both frustrated no. at each other for ignoring yeah. the other person being honest about where they were. Because, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. maybe his frustrations and fear around marriage have everything to do with his past relationships. Yeah. But this is not a, a relationship where there's a lot of healthy conversations and checking in and making each other feel safe and secure and just allowing your partner to talk without judgment, you know, even if they say something that slightly disappoints you. Instead of saying, well, what do you have like fucking, you know, commitment issues? You could be like, you know, I'll be honest, it's a little disappointing to hear, but it's okay. I'm, I'm processing, you know, like you guys are afraid to disappoint the other person because you guys are so reactive to disappointment that you're both just triggering the fuck out of each other mm -hmm. and stressing each other out. Do you think that like, this is something that I should like maybe try and like chill out and just continue the relationship? Or well, do you think what does chilling out it? mean to you? Like maybe I don't bring it up, but then I just yeah, feel like it's going to be the same well, thing. Well, I appreciate did. your honesty, but yeah, your so your version of chilling out is wrong. Chilling out doesn't mean <laughs> you ignore things. You know, chilling out isn't dismissing reality. It's not pushing down the things that you're stressed about. It's not pretending there isn't an issue. That's not chilling out. Chilling out is just talking to your partner anytime you're frustrated. Just say, okay, I just want to lead with. The good, which is I still really love you and any frustrations I have are out of fear of losing the good that we have. That being mm -hmm. said, like, I do feel like we are struggling getting on the same page, but you know what? Let's not beat each other up. A lot of couples do. You guys need couples therapy. You do. And I know you seem frustrated. I want to pitch that. Like, I want to go home for the weekend, come like whatever, and come back and... Like, I, I want to pitch that idea. Like, I want, would you be open to doing couples therapy with me? Like, I know that we're struggling to get on the same page. Like we said that last night, we both want to be with each other, but like, how do we do it? 
Well, I would start maybe with couples therapy. If he is not willing to do anything about the disconnect that you two seem to have, Mm -hmm. then maybe he's not your guy because a break isn't going to do anything. It just creates more frustration and more confusion. I know. But right now, he, he is stressed out by whatever expectations he thinks you have of him in the relationship. He doesn't have an answer. Genuinely, I don't think he has an answer he can give you that he thinks will satisfy you. So instead of that, he's just asking for a break, which is like a timeout from you having expectations of him. He just like was so mad when he asked for a break. Like he really was like gunning for me. And, and then when he sat on it for a couple of days, like then he was fine and then he wanted to talk. So like yeah, he's frustrated and he doesn't know how to communicate to you. And, and that was a, mm-hmm. a reactive thing. He said, if my therapist yeah. Darlene were sitting on this couch with us, she would say that you guys are in fight or flight mode every time you guys trigger each other and you're going to your child mm-hmm. selves, so to speak. I'm guessing when you guys fight, it probably feels like you are arguing with a child sometimes. It literally does. I bet he feels exact same way about you. That is nuts. <laughs> but I mean, okay. I think you just need to recognize a little bit that as frustrated as you are with him, it sounds like he has some very similar frustrations with you. And it's not a matter of who's right or who's wrong. You guys need to get on the same page. Like, I would love nothing more than that. But because he already said, like, I 100% don't want kids. Like, I know that he's telling me that, but like, I just, I'm struggling to believe it. Because I feel like I am coming at him like that. And then he's like, no. And that might be true. But you also have to consider the possibility he is, in fact, being honest. Mm -hmm. I mean, the kids things is important. It's important to know that you're with someone who has similar goals like marriage and kids. That being said, right Mm -hmm. now, you can't even answer a simple question is, how do you guys get on the same page? How do you guys stay connected? How do you advance your relationship? You said earlier, I just thought it would work itself out. I thought we would, as our relationship grows, how do you guys grow your relationship? Again, you don't need to get married or have kids to grow your relationship. Relationships like business, you're either growing or dying. You're either staying or becoming more connected or you're growing further apart. You know, and if you don't actively choose as a couple to stay connected or grow your connection, you will be growing apart Mm -hmm. and you can't answer that question. So you guys are just doing the very common thing is it's like, well, you know, we're comfortable with each other. We're boyfriend and girlfriend. I expect him to be there. This is the person I expect to have sex with. This is the person I expect to go to weddings with me because he's my boyfriend Mm -hmm. and he has expectations of you because you're his girlfriend. But other than that, you guys aren't like connecting. You're not growing your relationship. You're not becoming closer because neither of you are really prioritizing that. You're just taking the relationship for granted by assuming, stating that you're in a relationship, it will just organically work itself out. And that's just not how relationships work. Do you think that it was like too much of me to ask that we were on the same page about our future as far as moving in together? No, absolutely not. No. But it's how you ask it that matters and not immediately making feel judged for giving you an answer that disappoints you. I guess from what I'm hearing, it just, it wouldn't shock me for a guy who has reservations about kids Mm -hmm. and he already has a marriage that didn't work out. So he has reservations about marriage too. And he now has a relationship with you despite his love for you. And it sounds like there is a lot of good. And I know we've been focusing on the bad, you know, he is aware that kids add stress. He is aware that a marriage adds stress. So his only like thoughts on marriage and kids is stress. And he's in a relationship with someone who, despite whatever good you have in this relationship, you two don't handle stress very well. And so that doesn't make him want to have kids. Yeah. Here's what I would do if I were you. I would table the kids, as much as I hate saying that, because I do think you guys ignoring conversations isn't a good thing. But what I'm hearing, your biggest problem isn't figuring out whether he wants to have kids or want to get married and you two. Your biggest problem is that you guys aren't great at communicating your frustrations with one another. So if I were you, I would, if you get off the phone with us, I would just reach out to him and just say, listen, I love you. I miss you. Uh, I know we have a hard time communicating sometimes, but I really, more than anything, want to figure out if we can work on our connection and our communication Mm -hmm. because losing you and losing us is something I really don't want to consider. Yeah. I do think we need to address some of our you know, differences when it comes to kids or marriage. But I think before we even get there, I think we need to figure out whether we can be on the same page and focus on our connection and find ways to be a better couple because maybe that will change our perspective. See what he responds to that. But what if he says like, well, what's the point if you know that you want to have kids and I don't? 
well, that's how do I respond to that? You kind of say, well, do you do you think there's no point? Do you do you love me? Mm -hmm. And you could say, listen, if if you are literally one hundred percent certain, and you're not, you're you're never willing to have a conversation with me, then I, I guess maybe there isn't a point. But I feel like uh, we could be much better communicators. I think we could have a healthier relationship, and I think we don't know the potential of our relationship and how good it really could be until we learn how to communicate more effectively with each other. So like we, the last note that we left off on was uh, last night, he told me to text him when I got home. So I did. And I just, I just got home and he was like, okay, thanks for letting me know. Um, tonight was heavy and I know you had a long day. You should try to get some sleep. That was it. Okay. Do you want to craft that text that we, I was. I mean, yeah. Um, how do we want to start this? Hey. <laughs> Hi. Hey. Hey. I just want you to know how much I love you and I miss feeling connected with you. I know we have a lot to talk about when it comes to things that we want for ourselves in a relationship. Okay. But more than anything, I think we could do a better job of working on our connection. I know that I have things that I have to work on when it comes to how I communicate with you. More than anything, I want us to get better at making the other person feel understood yeah. rather than trigger okay. each other. Despite our problems, I just know that you're worth fighting for and there is a lot to love about what we have. I just think we could do a better job of being more connected and I really hope you feel the same way. I love you. And then hopefully he responds something positively and we'll talk later you know so, with some affection and then okay. i just i hope that he doesn't want to just be like we're too different and there's nothing that i can do about that i guess if he does say that but i just don't think that we are i just think that the communication is off and like i'm just a little too yeah and i think that's what you say as hurtful as it might be to hear that i think the best you can do is to calmly just say I'm really sad to hear that. And just, I guess, the, you know, again, it's such subtlety in communication. Because yeah. if he says that, it's going to hurt you, right? Mm -hmm. And you're going to want, you know, when people hurt us, kind of want to hurt them back. So you have to remember that he has the right to feel how he feels. And even though when he disappoints you, it might hurt, that it wasn't necessarily to hurt you or it wasn't deliberate, so hurting him back wouldn't be the best response. It's like the parent who says, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. You know? Yeah. It's like, oh, you're, I, mm -hmm. you being mad at me makes more sense, but you disappointed in me, it's like, oh, God, I don't know what to do with that. I feel bad. So it's that same yeah. energy. It's just like, well, I'm really fucking sorry to hear that. I'm heartbroken. But if you don't want to try with me, then I guess I have my answer. But I really hope you change your mind and I guess think about what I said because I do love you and I do think if we got on the same page, we would really have a better understanding of what the both of us really want for the future. But right now, I think we are just, you know, fighting with each other and pushing each other away and we're scaring the other person into, you know, planning a life with each other. Mm -hmm. From what you're telling me, and I'm not saying this to make you feel bad, like some of the things you some of the ways you've reacted and some of the things you said to him doesn't make him feel safe to commit yeah. to you or to have kids with you. And you need to make each other feel safe. And, you know, I think the text is fine. You don't need to add to it, but use that. Like, I want to, mm -hmm. I want us to make each other feel safe. And right now we don't do that. Yeah. Okay. And I want us to try, you know, use that us and we stuff. None of this you and I stuff, you do this, or why don't you have, why do you have commitment issues? And I've tried and I've this, but you said that and I've done this. No, mm -hmm. it's we have done a poor job. I'd love us to do X, Y, or Z. Can we try together? I want us to get on the same page. And just, if you honestly focus on that, I think it would go a long way. Okay. Well, that's exactly what I want. It's like, do you think I should like literally text this or do you think that yeah. it would yeah, like we could, I could say this in like person to him or like call him or it doesn't matter. I think both are great. I think you could text it and then yeah. reinforce it 
You know, most of the time when people say I want a break, you know, especially if I'm talking to like to two 22 year olds, I'm like, they just want to have sex with other people. I'm not getting this vibe. I'm getting yeah. the vibe that he like mm -hmm. he is in he's in flight mode when he says he wants a break. It's because he doesn't want to answer your question. He's frustrated. He's confused. Yeah. He feels attacked. He doesn't have an answer. So he's like, I just need a break. Right. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. And so you I think you making him feel like you recognize that will make him feel safer and make him feel less judged because right now he feels like he can't give you an answer that's good enough for you. And so he's like, I don't know what to tell you. So I guess let's take a break. And if he decides not to go to this wedding, it's not the end of the world. Well, I mean, he's not going. Okay. It is what it is. Like, I just want to revisit the conversations like after the weekend when like we take some time, whatever. If we would have gone home, we probably just would have argued the whole time anyway. Yeah. You guys are arguing because you're not on the same page. You don't know how to be connected. And then you're just triggering the mm -hmm. fuck out of each other. But it's not for a lack of love. In fact, yeah, the fact no. that you, it, it, what it sounds like you guys still do love each other, and it's the frustration of being in love and not being connected that is causing this animosity and resentment in the fighting. Yeah, because if exactly. you didn't care, you just you would you just wouldn't care. <laughs> You'd be indifferent. Yeah. You know that's why like a lot of yeah. that's why fighting isn't always bad in a relationship because at least you know you're trying. It's effort. The fighting comes from the frustration of not listening, not hearing each other. And even in our short conversation, I could tell that when you get triggered, you, you stop listening and you just kind of bulldoze your feelings out. Yeah, I do that. <laughs> I'm sure. And I'm sure he has plenty to work on, too. I just I haven't talked to him. I don't know. But if yeah, he's walking, if, he, if, 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 if he's uh, resistant to couples therapy, we can uh, we can dry run it on mediation with me and have him come up. <laughs> I can what's the, do my best. <laughs> what's the harm? You know? He needs it. He needs to fucking try. At some point, you have the right to ask him to try, because if he is not willing to try, mm -hmm. there is no point in this relationship. He does not get to say, "I like what we have. Why can't we just stay the same?" He can't just go through the motions. Yeah. That's not fair to you. No, that's that's exactly like what I am hearing, at least that he's saying. So that's frustrating. Uh, yeah, I'm not hearing like, that yet because you can't give me an answer in terms of what you guys do to grow your relationship. You guys have guys, you guys just decided to be together and your I whole, mean, like we're friends and we like yeah. date and we have like a super like intimate, like good connection. And like, we spend a lot of time together and he's my person. Yeah. But you got together based off of like some romantic connection. You started having sex. You have, you know, and now, yeah, like you just go through the motions. You have sex on a somewhat regular basis. You go out to dinner, you hang out with friends, but you guys don't sit mm -hmm. down and talk about your connection. You guys don't sit down and talk about your feelings. And part of it is because you've been afraid to ask because you know there's been a disconnect about what you guys both want. So you guys just push that down and you guys make a lot of assumptions and then you just read signals in tea leaves and confuse yourself and get frustrated when you read it wrong. Yeah. I and mean, then you express your frustration to him. He feels misunderstood and not heard. And then he gets reactive. He pushes back. And it's just this vicious cycle. Yeah. And I just want the cycle to end and I just want to be good. Being good is going to require some humility and, and an effort on both your parts and a desire to want to get to that place of feeling understood. So that's the goal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Practice admitting your fears with him. Start there. Should I send this text before I leave for the weekend for the wedding? I'll send and it like, right don't now. talk to him until then, or do I send it before? He's still your boyfriend. I know, I know he wanted a break and shit, but this is not some guy you've been dating for a couple of weeks. You don't have to tiptoe around this guy. There's no magic okay. time in which to send it. You should send it when you get off the phone with us. There's no okay. magic time. It's not like if you send it now, it's going to be well received. If you send it tonight, it'll be not well received. You know, this, you're not at risk of freaking him out because he barely knows you and you've been on one text. And now you've triple text him or something. You know what I'm saying? That's not what this is. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you should always okay. feel safe enough to tell your boyfriend that you care and love about him and you want to do whatever it takes to make it work. That's all you're saying. Okay. Try to make him feel safe. All right. I will. I'm going to do my best. I hope it works out. All right. <laughs> so thank you. I appreciate it. Me too. Good luck. There, I think there's a lot of potential there. You guys are just not on the same page. And we are always here if he wants to come on with you. We'd love to do a mediation with you too. All right. I'll see if I can just slip it in in the bottom of that text message. And by the way. <laughs> that that might be in person. Totally like, a... Listen, if nothing else, you're just, let, I care about you. I have a little... I did this podcast. Yeah. I, I'm tr I want I want us to work, and mm -hmm. I'm willing to fight for us. And maybe we'll realize we're not on the same page. But I want to exhaust every resource because you matter to me. 
because I love you. Because there's so yeah. much good about our relationship. Yeah. And, I, and I'm okay. open to that. And I hope you are too. Yeah. I feel that. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to send it. Okay. Well, good luck. Take care. Please keep us posted. And uh, we'll go from there. I will. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. What's your name? My name's Allie. I need help asking out a guy I've been talking to for six months. How old are you, Allie? I'm 21. Okay. So you've been talking to him for six months. What's that mean? Uh, just like Snapchatting, very casual, just seeing him every once in a while. And are you guys hanging out? We've hung out once. When? Um, it was this past weekend. Okay. He came over for a little while, but we've only really seen each other at the bar. How did that escalate? Like who messaged to? Did you invite him over? Did he invite himself? What was, what did that look like? Um, I kind of invited him. We both went back to our place that there was something happening at his and I was like, oh, you can come over if you'd like. Okay. And then he and said, And then okay. he came over for a little bit. All right. What did you guys do? Uh, we just talked for a while. It was like a couple hours. A couple hours? About what? What did you talk about? It was just like how the night went. We watched a movie, but we weren't really like watching it. We were just talking. We talked about like how classes are going and different things like that. Okay. And did you feel like he was flirting? Like, what was the vibe? Yeah. Yeah, I would say he was. It was definitely more than just like a friend situation. Yeah, I don't know many guys who are going over to a girl's house at night that they're not at least physically interested in. Are yeah. you just, you're just Snapchatting? Or is it you're also Snapchatting and texting? Like, what are, the, what are these conversations like? Um, well, for a while, it's just like, Snapchat's a random thing, but then it's been some conversations throughout it. It's like escalated to the point where there's more conversations now. There wasn't before. Okay. How did things end the other night? Um, well, it got like really late. It was like 5 a.m. And I was like, I should go to bed. So we just kind of like went our separate ways after that. So for what time did he come over? It was like 2. <laughs> Came over at two in the morning. And we all got back then. Yeah. And you guys stayed up and talked into the night. And finally at 5 a.m., you're like, yeah. I got to go to bed. And then he left. Yeah. And when he, you said he got to go to bed, was, like, was there like an awkward pause? Do you think like he was wondering if you were going to like invite him to stay the night or, or do you just kind of tell him to go? Like, what was that well, vibe like? I left it kind of open. Like, I, I think I did say he could say if he wanted. And Laura didn't say like that, but I was like, you're free to stay. Like, I don't have anything in the morning because I didn't. But he had stuff he had to do, like, er, well, early-ish. He had to wake up in like a couple hours, so he just ended up leaving. So he had also had to wake up early and he still stayed over till 5 a.m. If I were 21 years old and I did that, it's because I liked her. Okay. (laughs) You know? So... Yeah. I, I, I'm assuming you've been hoping that he would ask you out or something. Yeah. But he hasn't. So you're going to have to. Yeah. So, like, why not just, like, ask him out on a date? I don't know. I just don't really know, like, how. I'm kind of, like, shy, especially in person. I just, like, I don't know. I don't know how to, like, approach it. Okay. Well, you already asked him over at 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you're better than you realize. Why not just message him and say, we have you talked since he came over. Yeah. And the first, yeah. And did you guys, did you say I had really a lot of fun with you last night? Did he say that? Or like, what was, what was the conversation you did? Yeah. I said that and then he said he did too. And then we kind of just went into like the problems that were going on, like where he was living. Like just personal drama he's going in having yeah well and what is that drama out of curiosity it's just with like the housing here like they went in and like found stuff in their room and it was just a mess. okay so not that big of a deal yeah it's just yeah why don't you just message them and say let's go on a date you want to grab dinner i don't know i just feel like i'm scared i don't know why of what i mean i get the obvious but like yeah scared of i mean yeah i feel like it's just like that it's just like what the fear of like 
saying no or something. I don't know. No, I hear you, but it's not going to kill you. I know. It's just like a small campus. I don't know. I'm just like. What do you think is the worst going to happen? I don't know. It's like nothing bad is really going to happen. I think I'm just like overthinking it. Yeah. Well, we all do that, but. You said it's a small campus. You're yeah. acting like you're going to ask him on a date, and then the next thing you know, like you're going to walk out on campus, and everyone's going to point at you and laugh. And that's not going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. He shut up at 2 a.m., stayed till 5 a.m. Yeah. So if you say, let's go on a date, and he says, oh, and he says no, well, yeah, it's going to sting, and... Maybe you'll feel a little embarrassed, but like what I don't, nothing else is going to happen yeah. from that unless you think he's some sort of jerk who's going to, I don't know, tell people or I don't know a lot of people who Snapchat someone for six months on a re somewhat regular basis. And then as soon as you finally invite him over, he comes over at 2 a.m. and stays up and talks with you all night. Yeah, I just should. I should just do it. <laughs> yeah. You want to do it now? Yeah. Great. I will. Well, might, let's, let's message him. All right. I don't think we have to. This is not like some long message. Do you want to say like, do you want, let's go on a date? Yeah, I'll say that. Or maybe say, uh, how about you take me on a date? Okay. I could do that. Yeah. Are you sending it right now? Yeah. I love that. It doesn't matter if he says no. You just need to be proud of yourself for okay. asking. Okay. Did you send it? Yeah. Let's see. I did. It's on Snapchat, so it's just like the thing sent. The little blue arrow or whatever? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Let's just round of applause. Yay! <laughs> Yay! Okay, well, I guess keep us posted. Unless, do we want to stay on the line for like five minutes okay. and wait till he replies? Yeah, does he usually does reply he usually to you reply pretty quickly? quickly? Does he look at it fast? Not usually. And right now, like, it's still class time, so I don't know if he has a class or not, but... Okay. Damn, I want to. Yeah, I want to open it. Okay, I'll keep you updated. Yes. Okay. Please, Please do. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck. Keep us updated. Okay. Listen, rejection's a part of life. It's not going to kill you. I know you're shy, but you know, listen, you're you're already doing it. You know, you asked him over. It went well. You know. Yeah. Some people are going to like you. Some okay. people are not going to like you. Some people are going to love you. Some people are not going to love you. It's okay. It was also pretty okay. easy for you to send this message. There was like little resistance. Yeah. We yeah. get a lot of resistance sometimes. Yeah. Yes. Trust me. Yeah. So like maybe you're not as shy as you think. Like you should be, you should feel proud that you just were able to do that. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, good luck. Keep us posted. Okay. okay thank you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to send in those questions at asknick at thefilefiles.com. We'll see you tomorrow for Reality Recap. Bye. Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.